start by putting in my wire supports as many as I need for the location I'm at. I'll just put them right around the top here. You can see on the, I guess this is the back of my bag. These are what I use for flagging at each location, not to attract the animal, just so that I don't lose track of where my cables are at. If you get a big snow like we have here, or if you have a snow and then it melts, cables can be really tough to find. I've honest, I found that the pink color sticks out more to my eye than I've tried orange, I've tried yellow, I've tried other different colors. Pink just works the best for me. So the tools are hammer, stake driver, pruning shears, S-hook tool, cable cutters, and I also use a wire support driver. In my pack basket. They're right in the bottom. I just lay them in there. And if you look, my bag, my pack basket is pretty much empty. There's a lot of room in there if I want to take my jacket off, bring extra gloves, an extra hat, a water bottle. I keep my cables in this bag here. I just grab them one at a time if I need them. And the way I roll them up like that, they don't seem to tangle. I'm walking down into one of my cable setups here. I'm on a gas line, uh, runs through a big piece of public. And my, it looks like I'm, I am on a steep mountainside, but the road's not too far up there. So I come right down over here and I've got a few cables set on this gas line here. Just one area, so I just, I just cut off this one area. Most of the traffic has them coming uh, up and down the gas line here, just following along it. So I have one cable right here. They blend in. Great, so one right here. Uh, I have another right here. You can see that one a little better. And when I check these, I just walk right over top of them. Uh, another one right here. There it is. When I set cables for coyotes like this, I make the loop 10 to 12 inches diameter and 10 to 12 inches off the ground. I highlighted it in red here so you can see. In the top right at the 2 o'clock position is where I'll set the washer lock. Putting it at 2 o'clock allows for a little bit of play. If a deer were to come and bump the cable, it's less likely to dislodge and fire off the cable than if it were and at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock. One more right here. So to kind of get a, a full view of, well, here, here's the other looking the other way on the gas line, but there's some pretty defined trails coming through here. So one right there, one right there where this main trail splits. One there, there's a trail that cuts up and then another one kind of right there, there's another trail that comes, it's a long, long brush line that extends down through this creek valley but it gets narrower and narrower as it comes near the head of this stream. And then it stops all together way up there. So in this, in this small area, I just have permission on uh, this side of the tree line. In this three or four acre area, I have 18 cables I just set. I set pretty much every trail I could find going through there. There were some old canine tracks. I have three cables right in that corner, three coming in in this bottom down here I have three cables set you can see some trails going up there's a long trail coming right through the middle I have a few on that and then you can see it widens out a bit it's never more than 75 yards wide see there's another point of it that goes up to that tree line that runs across the ridge of that hill right there I have three cables right there there's trails cutting across from one field to the other Over here, I have another spot where the trails kind of fan out. And I've got one cable right here, a cable right there. You can tell with all these cables here, I put ducking sticks near them for deer. Uh, when you're doing that, you want to use a little thicker of a stick to do that to get the deer to 
want to jump over it rather than push through it as they would with smaller vegetation. This one here. These sticks over top of the cables, they are dead sticks, fairly brittle. Uh, they're not pushed into the ground and they're half an inch or less in diameter. So they will not become entanglements. They just look like an obstacle for deer to go over, for canines to go under. I've got another different type of location here for cable restraints. You can see the corner of this field. There are tracks, fox and coyote, running down along that edge. And they enter into the woods here, um, coming under over the fence. I caught a, a red here the other day. And so this is the, this is the catch circle that snowed back on top of it. Um, but there's there was a another fox here last night that marked this catch circle right here on the edge and there were a few trails coming up out of this corner that i just set up i set these up primarily for fox there are more fox than coyote tracks here so this trail had fresh fox tracks on it red fox and so that's about eight inches off the ground about an eight inch loop And coming up this way here, another trail. You can see some of the old tracks on it. And I've got this set right here. Same thing, about an eight inch loop, seven inches off the ground. This one was a little bit thicker, some natural um, guiding over the top. And then I have, there was a, a trail with a lot of fox tracks on it, running this steep, very steep edge here. And it just goes up along. You can see the trail follows the, the edge of this hill. And there were you know, a lot of tracks coming up through here. So I got one cable. right there kind of tough to see there it is so yeah that's for fox that's about seven by seven inches seven off the ground and there's really there's nowhere for them to run down there it's really steep so uh, i expect this will pay off in a few days this was this location was difficult to keep free of entanglements a half inch or greater um, so some of this, some of this brush that you see still standing has been clipped on the bottom and it's just resting there. It's private property, so I can do that here in Pennsylvania. Uh, but it's not, there's no, there's no half inch or greater entanglements around any of these sets. Actually, you know what I forgot? Oh, oh. I forgot I have another cable right over here too. This trail, they come... They come under this log right through here. And I've got one. That's tough to see from this angle, but yeah, I've got it right there on that trail. And that's another fox size loop there. Blocked off. You can see there's some tracks going down through there. I just stuck that brush in there to uh, keep them on this trail here. This is a field corner location. In a big field like this, there are often game trails coming in and out of the corners. It just gives the animal more cover. This coyote was caught on a trail coming in from the edge of this field. I have one cable there, deer knocked it down, and another cable I had right out here a little bit more open, but I, I blended it and it took a coyote last night. The tracks show he came from that other field over there, right down through here, traveling by itself. This is another field corner trail. The game trail comes out of this high goldenrod field, crosses the fence, and there was a few feet of brush where I was able to blend a cable in. This coyote ran down 
an old four-wheeler trail that ran through the brush here, crossed this little spring, and narrowed down right before it entered the field. I've caught doubles and triples before, but this was the first instance where I'd had one coyote kill another coyote. The female was caught in this first cable. She had bite marks all over her neck, and the male was about 15 yards away in this other cable. Again, it's just another reminder that you should always set as many cables as you can at a given location. Right. Look right over here. This is where I made a catch this fall. There was a trail coming out onto this main trail. You can see I made a catch there, right here, and then right back there further is where I did a remake. If you're doing remakes, you obviously can't set the same location. You can see there's no brush here to conceal your cable. So right back in here a ways, I put in another set. As in any type of trapping, there's always going to be non-target catches. In this situation, it's a small yearling deer got into one of my cables despite having a, a jump stick on it, and this deer is just not big enough to open that breakaway device. So I'm going to show you how to let these animals go safely without any harm to them or harm to you, the trapper. So first thing uh, to do with a deer like this is to cover its head. If I don't bring an extra towel with me or something, I'll just use my jacket and I'll cover the animal's head and their eyes and that usually will calm them down and then I can simply clip the cable off from around their neck. And when I do this, it is cold out today. Uh, it's about 20 degrees. I always take my gloves off. That way I can manipulate the cable and pull it out from their fur if I need to. Have a good pair of cable cutters here. So first thing, like I said, is cover the animal's head. And I just clipped the cable from around the animal's neck. It's still calm, its eyes are covered. So now I'll just uncover the deer and it'll be fine. 